Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Rachel Williams begins now. Good evening, everyone. The Greens have reignited calls to shut down the Ashley Youth Detention Centre after a group of detainees were involved in a seven and a half hour standoff with authorities. The youths climbing onto the roof of the facility, arming themselves with hammers and screwdrivers and refusing to come down. Gripping weapons and scaling the roof, youths run wild at the detention centre. They'd armed themselves with um, some uh, tools and were also throwing things from the roof. Police swarming the facility at around 3.30 yesterday afternoon as six detainees climbed on top of one of the buildings. After more than an hour, two youths made their way to ground level, but efforts to coax the other four down were in vain. Seemingly casual, the group remained on the roof until just before 11pm. Damage to the roof um, and the ceiling and also some some damage to doors and uh, light fittings and, and things like that. Their true motives unknown, but police suspect the aim was to create chaos. During negotiations, there was no demands uh, made for any specific requests. It's the second incident at the detention centre in only a matter of months. The Greens want the doors of the notorious facility closed for good. Close Ashley to kids. Build two new therapeutic facilities for young people, north and south, and repurpose the Ashley Youth Detention Centre. A report released last year was scathing in its assessment of the centre, citing safety concerns. The government insists there's no problem and is pushing ahead a $7 million upgrade. We'll review the circumstance and we will ensure that we take steps so that it can't occur again. No one was injured in the seven and a half hour standoff. A full investigation is underway. Whether the use will be charged is now a decision for the facility management. They will make the ultimate uh, decision because uh, it's their property. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmanian News. And we have some breaking news now. Public Health has just confirmed a second diagnosed case of coronavirus in Tasmania. Our reporter Ruby Kamein joins us live with more details. Good evening Ruby, what do we know so far? Rachel, it was revealed just 15 minutes ago of another confirmed local case, this time in Hobart. It comes after a 40-year-old man was diagnosed with the virus on Monday and has remained at the Launceston General Hospital in a stable condition. Now, we don't have any details on this current patient other than they've been admitted to the Royal Hobart Hospital. It's also unknown whether the two diagnosed cases are related. So, Rachel, will now have to wait for more information on this evolving situation. As the coronavirus epidemic continues to impact visitors to the country, Tasmania's tourism industry is leading the nation. The state's pristine views and unique experiences winning more than a dozen medals at a national awards night. Tasmania on the national stage, cleaning up at the Australian Tourism Awards last night. It was a sensational recognition of Tasmania's position in the national and international tourism market. The state taking out 17 of the 25 categories, including seven gold medals. It shows that we've got this breadth of um, really strong um, icon products in, in our key markets. So if you look through them, our nature tourism, our heritage, our great hotels and our major events as those gold medalists. Among the local standouts, Port Arthur Historic Site winning Australia's best major tourist attraction for the second year in a row. The Wooden Boat Festival judged as the country's top major festival or event with a colourful and quirky air mofo experience scoring a bronze medal. We know our strengths in Tasmanian tourism and the reality is we are the best in the country at doing it. A boost of confidence amid a tough time for local operators in the wake of the coronavirus crisis, steering tourists away from Australia. And we've seen uh, an in excess of 35% decline in bookings across the country. Uh, that's had a massive unprecedented effect on our tourism industry. Our product uh, is world class, it remains world class. And what we have to do is to ensure that we sensibly uh, invest in marketing to ensure that people understand that our door is still open. The awards also offering a major boost for the Huon Valley, still recovering after devastating bushfires ravaged the region early last year. Ashdowns of Dover Bed and Breakfast, winning best hosted accommodation after a tough 12 months. An example of where tourism can recover quickly and uh, through great products, great operators and, um, and obviously a commitment to delivering great 
Tasmanian hospitality. The public now urged to keep supporting these local businesses moving forward. The message this year is holiday at home and that is true for Australians to get out and explore their, their own backyard in every part of the country. Ruby Kamane, 7 Tasmania News. A cull of kookaburras could be considered by the government as wildlife experts express concerns the iconic bird is doing damage to our native threatened and endangered species. New data release shows the introduced birds are being found further across the state than in recent years. Carefully in captivity, these kookaburras are getting a bird's eye view of their territory. The iconic Australian animal isn't native to the state, introduced here in the 20th century to celebrate Australia's federation. The kookaburra was introduced to Tasmania in the early 1900s and since then we've seen a, a steady increase in the distribution, uh, the extent of the kookaburras throughout Tasmania. The striking species initially settled in the north of the state, but the last 20 years has seen them identified in areas such as the west coast, central highlands and the southwest wilderness. As the birds migrate, it's leaving experts concerned about the impact they're having on the natural environment. Well, even small marsupials, they can get their little beaks around. Uh, so it's left us with sort of a fair headache, I guess, with a great Australian icon, but also one that's doing damage and a conundrum on how to fix it. Bonarong's Wildlife Hospital has recently been given special permission to euthanise injured kookaburras when necessary, instead of rehabilitating and releasing them. Greg supports the idea of a cull in areas where it can impact on endangered species. We need to forget that a kookaburra is pretty. We need to forget that a kookaburra makes a very endearing noise and that it is a great Australian icon and recognise that it's the same as these other invasive species. While Eric agrees that the species needs to have closer monitoring, calling on the government to provide more data and support. We need better information on the, the true impact of the species in Tasmania before we're going to start talking about any sort of control or culling. The Premier today is saying the government is not considering the idea of culling the invasive species. The government uh, uh, in this particular area uh, is not intending a cull, uh, but we will work with the experts to ensure that we get the balance right. However, late this afternoon, the Department of Primary Industries issued 7 Tasmania a statement saying they would consider a cull under specific circumstances. Ebony Ablett, 7 Tasmania News. Local hip-hop artists have dedicated an album launch to a 26-year-old man who police say was hit and killed by a car at Hewenville last weekend. Friends and family gathered at the Brisbane Hotel gig in memory of Jari Wise. Jari was a big fan of both my, my music and uh, like Greeley's music, another friend of mine. And I've recently been in touch with Jari's mother, Faith. Um, and she reached out, told us the whole situation. And um, I was keen to get on board and, and help out wherever I could with it to get the message out. His mother's saying he experienced domestic violence in the past. Touched on Jari's story. And more to the point, the fact that domestic violence against men is real. It is a problem. Chari is set to be farewelled at a funeral later this month. Hundreds of the best up-and-coming athletes have pulled on their running shoes to compete for the Little Athletics state titles in Launceston. Under eights through to teenage tearaways battling to claim a podium finish in both track and field events. The event this year helping raise funds for a special cause. Any PB that is set today or personal best that is set today, uh, Little Athens Australia will donate 50 cents towards the bushfire appeal. Selectors will now choose a Tasmanian representative side to challenge the nation's best. A hidden laneway in Hobart's CBD is being transformed by colourful, creative works of street art. Known as Paint Jam, the event offers emerging and established street artists a safe and legal way to share their artwork with the community. The idea brought together by Vibrance Festival and the Hobart City Council to try and eliminate illegal tagging. We want people to come in. It's a safe and inclusive space where they can have a go at painting and um, yeah, feel safe about doing it. Paint Jam continues until 9pm with live music, food and drinks available. The Hawks and Demons have an anxious wait ahead of round one. Mitch Lewis limped off in the fourth quarter after rolling his ankle, while Sam Wiedemann also landed awkwardly in the final term. Former D skipper Jack Viney could come under scrutiny for this sling tackle, but Max Gorn is a lock for round one despite playing 
just half a game. He's done a power of work through the summer. Um, he's just working his way back. Um, he's still got two weeks to round one, so we wanted to get him a half a footy. He'll continue his training program, continue doing the load required to head into the season. Bailey Fritsch bagged five goals as the D's got up by 32 points at Utah Stadium last night. North Melbourne has managed a strong win against Adelaide in round five of the AFLW season. Playing today at the newly refurbished North Hobart Football Oval, the Kangaroos smashed the Crows by 42 points with a final score of 63-21. Today's win pushing the North Melbourne Tasmanian Kangaroos to the top of the ladder with four wins now under their belt. A number of late wickets has given Tasmania the upper hand on the second day of its Sheffield Shield clash against ladder leaders New South Wales. Earlier, Charlie Wakeham was the standout for the home side with the bat, blasting 78. The Tigers eventually bowled out for 270 before quick Nathan Ellis continued his stellar red ball form, pinning Nick Larkin for a duck. New South Wales is three for 105 at stumps and leads by 30 runs heading into day three. And Tasmanian hockey sensation Eddie Ockenden will tonight enter the record books. The Kookaburras forward is set to play his 366th game against Argentina in Perth, making him the most capped Australian player. While overnight, fellow Tasmanian Jack Welch netted a late equaliser to help his side secure a three-all draw. Good evening. Launceston enjoyed the state's high today of 20 degrees. Burnie and Devonport both 19, while Hobart recorded 15. Smithton and Lowhead also reaching the high today, which was 20 degrees, 19 on King and Flinders Islands, while Strawn made it to 18 degrees. St Helens and Friendly Beach is 17, 16 at Ooze, Grove 15, 14 for Mariah Island and a high of just 9 today at Liawini. Low level cloud was seen today over much of Tasmania. Mid to low level cloud covered much of eastern New South Wales, eastern Queensland and the southwest of Western Australia, while an area of mid to high level cloud drifted over the bite. Tomorrow a high pressure system sits to the west of Tasmania, extending ridges over South Australia, Victoria and New South Wales. A trough is over the top end, while several troughs cover parts of Western Australia. And for our coastal waters tomorrow, winds 10 to 20 knots and seas with 1 to 2 metre swells. There is a minor flood warning issued for the South Esk River tomorrow. In Hobart, a light morning shower or two, 16. Richmond looking the same and 19 for ooze with a possible light early shower. Launceston, partly cloudy, 19. 18 in Devonport, cloudy there. And Deloraine, 18 and partly cloudy. Burnie, a cloudy day tomorrow, 17. Strawn, 19 with a possible light shower. And a light shower or two for Curry, 18. A light shower or two clearing in the east of the state, St Helens 16, Swansea 15 and 18 for Whitemark. The UV is 6s and 7s, which is high. On Monday, showers about the northeast with possible showers forecast for the rest of the state. Tuesday, fine apart from a possible morning shower in the north. And Wednesday, looking like a fine day across the state. Possible showers in Sydney, Brisbane and Canberra tomorrow. A sunny day in Alice Springs, 30 degrees. Perth, a humid and mostly sunny, 31. And Melbourne, a mostly sunny day, 23 degrees. Currently in Hobart, it's cloudy and 13. Launceston, partly cloudy and 17. And Devonport, mostly cloudy and 17. Rach. Wonderful. Thank you very much for that, Carmen. Well, that's all your news for now. Thanks for joining us. Have a great evening. Bye for now.